The most difficult thing is the decision to act. The rest is merely tenacity. The fears are like paper tigers. You can do anything you decide to do. You can act to control and change your life. And the procedure, the process, is its own reward. This quote by Amelia Earhart sets the tone for the book we'll be discussing today, which just happens to be the winner of the 2016 Scott O'Dell Award for Historical Fiction and the 2016 National Jewish Book Award for Young Adult Literature. The book is The Hired Girl. It is written by Newbery medalist author Laura Amy Schlitz. And this book takes us to 1911 when the women's suffrage was in full force. Uh, the diary entries of Joan Scraggs are very heartfelt. And the audience, we can feel the anguish that 14-year-old Joan has to go through and has to endure at the hand of her bitter and mean father after her mother dies. Joan wants nothing more for her life than to become a school teacher, to fill her mom's desire and to become a school teacher. So she loves learning and she loves reading. So a school teacher seems to be a good choice for her career. Um, however, her father has different ideas for her. He tells her she must quit going to school. She must quit seeing her teacher, Mrs. Chandler, so that she can stay at home and do the women's job, which is take care of the household, um, cook and clean. Um, so she's really upset that she doesn't get to learn anymore. But one day as she's taking care of the house, she finds out that women in the city are making $6 a week for less work than she's doing at the farm. So she decides she's going to ask her dad for a dollar a week so that she can save for her future. Well, when she asks her dad, of course, he gets very upset. He scolds her. He insults her. And Joan just decides she's going to run away. She's going to run away to the city. Uh, but before she can do that, her dad burns her three books. The three books that were gifts from Mrs. Chandler. Um, and you'll hear about the books all the time, all throughout the book. Um, the, the three books are Ivanhoe, Jane Eyre, and Dombey and Son. Um, and those books are more than just a way for, for Joan to pass the time. They, they're an escape from the harsh reality she has to live every day. And, and they've helped shape the way she sees the world outside of Steeple Farm. Um, where she lives with her dad and three brothers. Um, so Joan decides she's leaving. She After that, there's no other choice. So she makes her way to Baltimore, um, and on the way she decides to reinvent herself. Uh, she changes her name to Janet Lovelace, and she decides she's going to be 18 years old. Uh, when she reaches Baltimore, it's really dark. She has no idea where she's going, and she has no place to stay. So she makes her way to a park, because she feels like it's a beautiful park and a beautiful part of town and nobody bad would be there. So as she's laying on the bench, contemplating her steps for the next day, a man approaches her, um, asks her if she's okay, if she needs any help. And we later find out that his name is Solomon Rosenbach. He's one of the sons um, of the family that she'll be staying with. Um, but he invites her in and... Mrs. Rosenbach asks her, you know, if, if she has any references. Um, that's what they need in the city in order for you to be a hired girl to work in the house. Well, of course, Joan doesn't have any of those. So the mother decides that she'll let her stay for the night, of course. And uh, if she can stay on and help the housekeeper they have now, which her name is Malka, and she's like over 70 years old, so she can't do the tedious things that needs to be done around the house, that um, that Mrs. Rosenbach will write her a letter of reference so that she can get a job at another house. Um, Joan, while talking to Mrs. Rosenbach, not only finds out that they're very wealthy, but they are also Jewish. Um, and for a devoutly Catholic girl, finding out that she's just met a Jewish person, it's kind of a big deal for Joan. So, um, in the excerpt that I'm going to read, it's when she first finds out that she has met someone that's Jewish. Uh, willing to work in a Jewish household, she said. And when I didn't answer right away, she added, you, I think, are not Jewish. No, ma'am, I said, and I was taken aback as if she had asked me if I were an Indian. 
<clears throat> it seemed to me, I mean, it doesn't now, but it did then, as though Jewish people were like Indians, people from long ago, people in books. I know there are still Indians today, out west, but they're civilized now and they wear ordinary clothes. In the same way, I guess I knew there were still Jews, but I never expected to meet any. It's just as I said, Solly, said Mrs. Rosenbach. She has no idea. She seemed both irritated and amused. Have you ever met a Jew before, Mrs. Lovelace? No, ma'am, I stammered. But I've read about them in the, in the Bible and in Ivanhoe. Rebecca was a Jewish, and she's my favorite character in the whole book. It was her turn to look surprised. <clears throat> You've read Ivanhoe? Yes, ma'am, I said. I saw that she'd been thinking I was an ignorant girl. That picked me, but I didn't waste time worrying over it because I was racking my brain trying to figure out all the things I knew about Jews. Most of the characters in Ivanhoe were horrid to Rebecca and Isaac because they were Jews. But Ivanhoe was good to them, and Ivanhoe was the hero. And Rebecca, why Rebecca, she's the heroine, and a hundred times more interesting than Rowena, who's mostly just beautiful. I added, Ivanhoe's a really good book, Mrs. Rosenbach. She surprised me by laughing. Rebecca is my favorite, too. One thing that I really enjoyed about this book was seeing exactly, seeing a little taste of what women had to go through uh, back in, during, you know, w women's suffrage. Um, I think it's good to be reminded um, of just how hard the women had it back in, back in the days, maybe not even too long ago, um, to realize how good we, us women, have it now. Um, I know when I was 14, I didn't have to go through any of the stuff that Joan went through, but I can empathize with her because... I remember what it was like to be a 14-year-old girl and to not have your father or your brothers or anyone around you love you. And the one person that did, Mrs. Chandler, she wasn't even allowed to be around Joan. It, I, I can just feel the pain and the hurt that Joan felt um, throughout this book. And, and another thing that I really enjoyed was the fact that it was written as diary entries. It it allowed the book to be more intimate to its readers. You know, we knew the inner thoughts of Joan. And we Joan tells us what will be going on the next day. And then we can't wait to read so we can find out what actually happened, um, you know, that day. So um, there's a lot of interesting aspects of this book. Um, can Joan make it on her own in the city of Baltimore? Will the Rosenbachs find out that Joan is keeping some secrets of her own? How will Joan, a devout Catholic girl, make it in a devout Jewish home? Go grab you a copy of The Hired Girl today so you can join Joan on her journey and you can find out all the answers to these questions. I know you'll enjoy it because I did.